Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to find out the real minimum requirement to play Stalker 2. That was a lot of work and this video probably going to be long, so let's start right away. Welcome to Respond PC, I'm Dunk, let's game on. We're going to start out by testing Intel CPU with the NVIDIA GPU. Back to the i7-7700K, if you remember the last video, we had a CPU bottleneck caused by the RAM, so I upped the RAM to 24, so I have 2x8 and 2x4. Still playing with the, the GTX 1060 6GB just to retest the minimum requirement but with more memory to uh, remove bottleneck. And we relieve a bit the stress on the CPU. We're now in the mid-17 instead of uh, kicking the 99% uh, often. And we see the 16GB was not enough uh, because even at the same settings at 1080p low settings TSR balance we have the same FPS but now we're using 17 to 18 gigabyte of uh, RAM and I guess uh, the GPU is the next uh, bottleneck uh, it's pegged at 100% using 5.8 out of 6 gigabyte of VRAM but we having the same FPS 28 without a frame gen and close to 59 with frame gen it doesn't happen often but this time I need to up the GPU higher to get the target of 30 FPS with the upscaling in this case would be TSR for NVIDIA GTX SRE. So let's jump to the GTX 1070. We kept the 24 gigabyte of RAM and we're going to keep it until the end of this uh, testing because otherwise it become a bottleneck for the CPU. And if we follow the minimum requirement, the 1070 should actually be the minimum requirement because with the TSR at balance we get our 30 FPS we actually 31 FPS average sometimes dipping in the 28 29 but sometimes I'll go to the 34 and obviously it's higher when you go uh, in the open world and if you want to enable uh, frame gen uh, you get quite a boost CPU is still wavering in the 70 to 80 percent of its position and for the memory we obviously using more than 16 gigabyte of uh, RAM which is higher than the proposed minimum requirement of 16 max and if you don't want any of the upscaling you can leave it TSR negative but now you need to upgrade to the GTX at 1070 Ti that will allow you to play like in the city at 31 FPS and still have a full 1080p size screen GPU peg at 100% that's what we want 5.7 gigabyte of VRAM out of 8 the CPU is uh, in the mid 50s so no more bottleneck from there and the RAM we got down a little bit 15.8 to 16 gigabyte of RAM that mean even for that card you need more than 16 gigabyte of uh, memory because you still need uh, windows to run in the background since we found our GPU let's uh, drop down the CPU because now we have some headroom GPU is no more orbital neck and the memory is no more orbital neck Okay, so let's drop to the i7 6700K. Won't do a big jump because the CPU usage is already quite high on the 77K. And what we get? The exact same results. So we get 31 FPS TSR native 1080p low settings. The only visible difference is the memory usage. We're using 16.5 to 17. As with the i7 7700K, we were just under 16, sometime hitting 16. Dropping the CPU even more, I was going to go with the i7 5920K, but apparently my motherboard died. So we're going directly to the i7 4771. And that's where we hit the wall we have now back to the CPU bottleneck without having the RAM bottleneck. We still have 24 GB using 17 GB of RAM but we now have the GPU not hitting 100% utilization. We're mid 60 to 70 and the CPU is the i80 to 90 and sometimes hitting 100%. So you cannot go lower than that and give us an average of 26 FPS but we have often big starter and drop to the teens FPS. Switching to the everything AMD, GPU and CPU I'm back to the Ryzen 5 1600 non-X and the RX 580 with X. But like with Intel, this time I'm trying with 24 gigabyte of uh, RAM. I know when I test on my proposed minimum requirement video that we didn't really have a CPU bottleneck with the AMD side. But you can see with 24, we're still using 17.1 gigabyte of RAM. And the CPU is a little bit more happy, being a little bit lower 
and the CPU decision. But our FPS didn't change at all. I actually have a worse result than my first video with an average of 27 FPS. That means the GPU is our bottleneck right now. And I have the RX 580X variant. I have a higher clock speed than the RX 580 non-X. And on top of that, I have FSR balance enabled. And to be on the safe side, I upgrade the CPU to the Ryzen 7 1700, kept 24 gigabyte of uh, RAM, and still using the RX 580X to see if it's really the bottleneck or the maximum it can go is not even over 30 FPS. And it actually it is uh, the maximum the RX 580X uh, can deliver. Still at 1080p, low settings, FSR balance, uh, we still get the, the 20 something FPS. CPU is doing even less in the low 50s to mid 40s which is session and for the ram we are in the 17.3 ish out of 24 so the gpu is really the maximum we can give time to up the gpu by one i mean the rx 590 so both nvidia and amd the minimum card need to be upgraded the rx 590 a little bit more performance still with 8 gigabyte will give us just under 30 fps we are 29 fps average with fsr balance because that's what the dev said it should be. GPU is peg, CPU is in the mid 50s, and RAM we're using 20.6. I'm pretty sure if uh, MD was uh, still supporting those cards uh, on the driver side, uh, we'll be able to uh, reach that 30 FPS plus. But since they stop, we won't get more performance from those cards. So if we jump to a more recent GPU from AMD, the RX 5500 XT, this is the 8 gigabyte variant, which still receive an update from AMD driver. We're still trying to reach 30 FPS at 1080p low settings with FSR balance, but we don't. This uh, give us a uh, 27 FPS, uh, which is quite similar result as the RX 580 that we just test. GPU is PEG using 5.3 gigabyte VRAM out of 8, CPU in the mid 60s and using 22 gigabyte of RAM. I guess we need to continue to go higher in the GPU performance. And now we on the RX 5600 XT. And this will be our sweet spot for the AMD. As 1080p, low settings, FSR native, so real 1080p, we get an average of 32 FPS. We finally found the GPU for the AMD side. Offering in the 95 to 99% utilization, 5.7 gigabyte of VRAM, CPU in the mid 50s using 21.2 gigabyte of ram though but we finally found the card which will, should be the minimum requirement. Keep in mind, I was trying to find 30 FPS native in city, village, settlement, whatever they call it. Because the dev said 1080p with the upscaling enable, TSR, FSR, or XCSS. So I'm assuming it's uh, with the upscaling, but at native, because we want 1080p. And they said 1080p. Now I just have to find out the CPU. The Ryzen 7 1700 definitely can do the job. The Ryzen 5 1600 can do the job also. So let's drop to the Ryzen 5 1500X. Still with the RX 5600 XT and 24GB of RAM. But we have a CPU bottleneck. We need to be FSR balanced to reach 30 FPS. CPU is in the i 80s to 90s utilization. And finally, I'm back to the Ryzen 5 1600, but with the Arc A580. I know the card can do the job. The motherboard supports resizable bar, but that CPU doesn't support PCI Gen 4. It's PCI Gen 3. Even if I have resizable bar, playing on a Gen 3 PCIe lane will penalize the GPU. And right now, native or balance, XCSS, we have a hard time to stay in the 20s FPS. And if you remember my proposed minimum requirement, they put the A750 as a minimum requirement. And it will reach with XCSS balance the 30 FPS. But it's not great and the card can do way better. Just look at my video Arc GPU on Stalker 2. The A750, I was able to reach 32 FPS, 1080p, but at high settings with XCSS quality. The Ryzen 5 1600 only support PCIe Gen 3. So we have some out of a CPU technological bottleneck, I guess we can call, because it was low settings XCSS balance to be able to reach 34 FPS. Yes, I'm playing on a 12th gen uh, CPU but you can go as low as a 10 gen CPU that support a PCI Gen 4. Same go for Ryzen. If you start at a Ryzen 5 3600 or Ryzen 3rd gen, you should have a PCI Gen 
4 besides some uh, Ryzen uh, something something G which don't have a PCI uh, Gen uh, 4. So if we go back to the ARC A580 without being limited with the PCI Gen 3 lane we can play the game at medium settings 1080p XESS balance and we get a over 50 FPS average. You can even put it at the uh, XESS native and still be just over 40 FPS. But remember you not only need the motherboard that supports PCI Gen 4, the CPU that's on it also need to support the PCI Gen 4 with resizable bar. If you want to go verify the old test of the ARC GPU lineup, you're welcome to go watch my past video, which I tested every ARC GPU. So here's our winner for the real minimum requirement. On the Intel side for CPU, we have the i7-6700K. So we drop one generation, stay on the i7. For AMD, the Ryzen 5 1600. We just dropped the X. You definitely need 24 gigabyte of memory. So your RAM is 24, not 16. On the GPU side, Nvidia, we have the GTX 1070 Ti. The GTX 1070 can probably do the job, but we'll be safe with saying with the Ti variant would be a better bet. For AMD, the RX 5600 XT. And for Intel, the A580. As long as you have PCI Gen 4 in your system with a CPU that support it. Otherwise, you will need the A750 to compensate for the penalty you get for not having PCI Gen 4. And that's all I have to say for Starker 2. Real minimum requirement. Thanks to have come watching. See you in the next one. And subscribe.